Hello my beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. For those that are new, my name is Nelly. Today is the second video about how demons enter your home and body. One of the ways that demons can enter your body is through fashion trends. Sometimes we buy these clothes and they are second hand clothes and we don't realize that the person that had was wearing these clothes, what kind of environment are they from? I know sometimes here in Africa, some of these clothes are brought in from Europe and we just get these clothes and we like them and we wear them immediately without even praying for them. When you have a clothing, a second-hand cloth, you should anoint and pray over those clothing. Do you know that demons can sometimes attach themselves through clothing? That is why sometimes as a parent and you've got a child that is going to boarding school, if you need to warn your children not to just keep borrowing clothes from their friends anyhow, because you don't know what kind of environment that child is from. Sometimes it just can be innocently they are just borrowing something from a friend. So as a mother, you need to be vigilant and advise your children not to wear other people's clothes. Mostly girls, girl children are the ones that always like to borrow one thing or another. In fact, not all items from thrift shops and secondhand clothing can be demonic, but I will always advise you to pray over them before you actually bring them into your home. I had a t-shirt that was given to me as a gift by a friend. The minute I saw that t-shirt, I loved it. I loved it so much. But I noticed that the design of the t-shirt just had this thing in it that was part of the design that I didn't quite like. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm wrestling with my mind. Let me just put it aside and see how I feel about it the following day. You won't believe what happened. The very same night, I had a dream whereby I was wearing prison clothes and my hands were tied together. I kept praying that my hands should be relieved. I, I was, it was like sort of like a nightmare and everyone around me was wearing prison clothes. Immediately when I woke up, I asked the Holy Spirit, what is he trying to tell me? And you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? Was remove the t-shirt. And that t-shirt was in the laundry because normally when I buy some, when I get something new, I wash it. I just took out the t-shirt. Unfortunately, I'm going to be donating this t-shirt. As much as I love it, I just, some things I just need to let go. My spirit told me that this is not the trend that you can wear. As a Christian, there are some things that your spirit will tell you not to wear. I'm not saying all designs or all prints could be demonic. Each individual, your spirit will tell you, I'm not going to sit here and say, don't wear this or don't wear that. But your spirit will tell you what to wear and what not to wear. So it's up to you. So with regards to that t-shirt, some, another Christian can wear it with no problem, but for me, I had to let go of that t-shirt. The next things that you should not bring into your home is cursed objects. Sometimes we bring these things without realizing it, that they are cursed. And things that we buy from, from thrift shops and things that we buy from souvenirs and also some antique stuff. That is why when you get some things from these shops, you need to pray over them because you don't know what environment are these things from. I mentioned this in the first video, which is over here. So I'm not going to go into details. Sometimes we buy these things which look, which we think they will look nice in our home, not knowing that you are bringing something demonic into your home. So you need to be very careful. Every person and every individual is different. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 25, God speaks about a demonic item that was brought in that needed to be removed. So God was aware that sometimes that some things that we bring in and into our homes that could be demonic. 
and they bring destruction into our homes or into our marriage without realizing it, what is the cause of it. Maybe sometimes it could be a wedding gift that sometimes you will take thinking it's a gift, yet it's a monitoring object. You know the demonic world is very broad. A little item that you think is just a gift can cause destruction into your marriage, whether they're brand new or they're not, because not everyone is happy that you're getting married. It's always safer to actually pray for it before you bring something into your home. Just pray for it. Like everything else, guys, because anything that we get, even food, we pray over it. So you need to pray over everything. The next thing that brings demonic spirits into your home or your body is through your mouth. You know, the Bible says the tongue is the most powerful tool. So whatever that you say with your mouth will manifest. Whether you're joking or not, it's in the Bible. Words are very powerful. So you must be careful what you say about yourself or anybody else. Don't say things like, I'm so broke over my dead body. and Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so stressed. Don't say things like that. The devil is very cunning. He will use your words to bring a curse into your life without you realizing it. A lot of couples, when they're fighting, they call each other names. Without realizing that your husband and you are one, you are already joined together as one. Whatever you're calling your husband, you are literally calling yourself. So don't curse yourself with your mouth. Speak positive things with your mouth. Don't mention how broke you are. I know it can be very difficult, even though you know that you've got nothing, but don't mention how broke you are. So sometimes our mouth can, can bring in curses. Once the curse come in, the demons come in as well. And blessings and curses can be transferred from the tongue to the physical. So you must be very careful what you say with your mouth. Let all your conversations be full of grace. Next thing that brings in demons into our homes and our body is through idolatry. You know, sometimes we bring curses into our home. We bring in these things into our home and it can, it can affect us up to the fourth generation without us realizing it. So we must be very careful about that. Things that we idolize as well. And the next one is through cults. As young people, they go into universities and they end up joining some cults. Some join cults when they are old as well. This is an opening for the devil without you realizing it. You know, sometimes the devil doesn't just come. We are the ones that go out there and seek for him and bring the devil into our homes. This is when you go to a witch doctor for healing. Or maybe sometimes you practice sorcery or divination. You are bringing a curse into your life. It clearly says it in Deuteronomy 18, verse 9 to 12. So you must be careful when you go to a witch doctor. It comes with a price. It might work for you for a while, but the price that you have to pay is huge. You should avoid seeking help from witch doctors. If you pray to God, these spirits can leave you. When you don't know you've got something in your home, pray to God to reveal to you what is in your home that you need to remove. Because God will reveal to you. And sometimes God will reveal to you through dreams. The next one is pornography. It's another way of demons entering your home and body. They will enter you through the spirit of lust. So once a spirit of lust comes in, it affects your marriage as well. And the next is murder. If you commit murder for the first time, that spirit will follow you. That is why when a person commits murder, they can do it all over and over again. Maybe the first time it was a mistake. But that once you do it the second time, that spirit begins to follow you. That is why when a woman has done an abortion for the first time, they can easily do it again. So you need to pray to God. To forgive you with regards to that. Anger is another way that demons can enter your home. Anger can be transferred. When you are carrying a child and you are pregnant and you are angry with the father, 
Maybe the father has left you when you are pregnant and you become angry. That child in your womb can feel that, what you're feeling, your emotions. That is why it's very important when you are pregnant to be in a happy environment. But sometimes it's not possible. Babies can sense everything. Even babies can communicate with each other. Remember when Mary was pregnant and she went to go and see Elizabeth. The minute she greeted Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby kicked it inside her. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. So how did these babies know if babies cannot communicate? Be careful what you speak to your unborn child. When you are angry with the father and you keep saying things, negative things about the father, you are planting a seed of rejection to your child. And that child, when that child is born, the devil will bring in the spirit of rejection. That child will grow up with issues. Issues of anger, number one, and issues of rejection. You need to speak positive words to your child and you will give birth to a happy child. If you've been saying things, negative things, ask the Holy Spirit to forgive you and ask God to remove those curses and remove that spirit of rejection and anger. Why do you think a child portrays anger issues at the age of two? These days we call it the terrible two tantrums. Why should a two-year-old have tantrums? So you need to speak positive words to your unborn child. Sex is another way that demons can enter your body. Remember, sex is spiritual. Until you realize that these spirits are in you, you can break them through prayer. And another one that demons can enter is through hair. A lot of us ladies, we wear these weaves. Brazilian, Peruvian, Indian. I know it may sound ridiculous, but do you know where this hair is from? And whose hair was it? Do you even pray for this hair before you actually wear it? History shows that when it comes to the hair, especially the Indian hair, it's collected from different women that sell their hair because of poverty. And they bring in their hair into this temple for sacrifice. And this hair is mixed together to make a bangle and it's sold. And you come and buy it and you wear it in your hair without even praying over it. Anointed, just like everything else. Some people even wear it without even washing it first. Because your hair is your glory. And you're carrying somebody's glory with you. Not even somebody, a lot of people's glory with you. Because it's more than one bangle to make a wig. So some of these weaves are not even real hair, they're just synthetic hair. It will not harm you to get home and pray over this hair and be safe. When you're cutting your hair and selling it, you are selling your glory. Sometimes you cut your hair and sell it for a good cause, like for the cancer patients. There is nothing wrong with that. All you need to do is, when you get that hair, just anoint it and pray over it. Just plead the blood of Jesus. It will help you in the long run. One thing about the devil, he's very sneaky. He can enter in so many ways. He will find ways to enter. It's very important to pray over these things because spirits are everywhere. I have to finish this video. It's raining outside. Thank you for watching. If this is content that you like, please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you on the next video. God bless you.